So a couple months ago, I got into Unraid, and when I first kind of showed my setup, uh, a couple of you pointed out some of the noobish mistakes that I initially made. And the primary mistakes that I made was one, I put an NVMe drive that should have been used as a cache drive in my array with all of my other drives. And two, I had a misunderstanding of the possibilities and potential that actual file shares had, particularly the app data folder. I went ahead, created my own Docker folder, only included drive for that Docker folder to be one of the uh, drives on the array that I wanted, which was the NVMe. Overall, it just was not efficient or how it should have been at all. I've already started the process of fixing these issues. If I go over here to main, so far the one thing I did was actually shrink my array and rebuild my parity. So you can see I now have six instead of seven. This right here, this unassigned drive was part of this array right here initially. What we're gonna be doing in this video is one, continue fixing my little kind of noob mistakes here and uh, setting up a new cache and actually upgrading to this right here. This is a move speed two terabyte drive. They sent this over specifically for this video. Supposedly supports speeds of 7,000 megabytes a second. So I am excited to go ahead and throw that in there. And one of the things that just makes Unraid really cool is how actually kind of easy it is to fix this. Uh, actually shrinking an array with other types of RAID configurations are much more difficult than the process that I've done so far with this. If we go over here to the shrink array documentation, there are a couple ways to do this. The method I used is the remove drive and rebuild parity and the procedures right here, it is fairly simple. All I did was first changed my actual Docker share so it didn't include that new or that uh, NVMe drive that was in my array. From there, I backed up all my Docker configuration files into a folder right here on my desktop. I could have just moved them over to the other drives, but th this is gonna work fine. And then I went under main, took a screenshot of my kind of array configuration because you don't want to accidentally uh, put a different drive as your parity drive because that parity drive is gonna get completely wiped. So take that screenshot, make sure everything kind of matches up there. Under retain current configuration, selecting all, that is a very helpful thing to do. And after everything was looking good, I went ahead, started the array, and then I let it rebuild the parity, and that's what it's been doing for the last like eight hours or so. It takes quite a while to do that. Now there is a risk to that while it's rebuilding that parity. If you just so happen to be incredibly unlucky and a drive fails, you are gonna lose data, but they do have a clear drive then remove drive method right here that will prevent data loss. Now I am where I currently am, and that is with this uh, drive right here that I'm gonna upgrade. Well, another thing I need to do is with that, if I go over here to Docker, and let's just say I open up Overseer, you can see if I go to more settings, mount user docker overseer i'm going to be switching all these back over to the app data share that you're actually supposed to use and which is kind of the default but i'm going to do that after i add this new drive and set up that share so if i go over here to shares this app data share is going to be set on a cache pool which is the method that i should have used when uh, initially adding that NVMe SSD. So with that, I do actually need to shut this down so I can upgrade that. So let's go over here, let's go shut down. Just for the record, I do want to uh, kind of flex my uptime going on 80 days, which is pretty good. I got a UPS in there and all that. So th th that was definitely uh, helpful in that regard. So main, shut down, proceed. Let's go grab the NAS. All right, we got our NAS here. If you're not aware, I'm using the uh, TerraMaster. I forgot the specific model, but it's the six bay kind of desktop tower guy. This is the NAS that I use primarily for media. So movies, TV shows, things like that. I use Synology for like personal photos, documents, you know. Now check this out. This is an LTT screwdriver. I actually made this one, the kind of custom color scheme here at the uh, LT Expo, super cool. Ugh. Let's move this down a little bit so you all can see what's going on here. There we go. Here is the TerraMaster. We're going to unplug our USB and then unscrew this. There we go. Let's pop off this side panel. I forgot where the SSD is. Hopefully it is like right here. And look at that. It is. I got a system memory module right here. I should probably upgrade it. So now we're going to get our two terabyte SSD out of here. Some tiger eyes on it. 
Now I do have two slots here. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to put another two terabyte SSD in here, but this little 128 gig kind of sucks. It overheats all the time. So I'm just going to remove it. There we go. Now this thing did come with a heat sink. I'm curious to if it will fit. I'll use this one. This one's a little bit better and I think it will fit perfect. So let's get this thermal pad here as I can. Damn, that was pretty good. And then pop it on our hoping for the best. There we go. I mean, it looks pretty solid to me. Did I do it on the right side? Yeah, I did. <laughs> That's good. It has a sticker on the back and on the front. You can see the confusion. All right, we're looking good. So now I'm gonna go plug it back in. <sighs> oh, can't forget this, kind of important for Unraid. All right, we are up, we are good to go. I was pinging it to make sure it worked. And we're in the available array page. Now this is where I made the mistake when I first set it up, because right here I clicked on this and I added it just like that. You do not want to do that. Let's leave that unassigned. Here I do want to add a pool. This is going to be a cache pool, one slot. Let's go ahead and add that. And then scroll on down here. Our cache is going to be assigned to the drive we just installed. And that looks A-OK -okay to me. So we are now going to start it up with a actual drive associated to cache. And I didn't look too far into it, but it should be fairly easy to add a second two terabyte cache drive to the same pool, but again, I don't know. And I will also note that if I'm doing anything that could be done better or more efficient, whatever, just let me know. It, it would be helpful. Now, but of course, before I could get too far, this is unmountable, unsupported partition layout. We do need to format it. One thing to note before I do that, if I do go in here, you have some additional options. So the file system auto, I believe auto is ButterFS. We're gonna leave it as that. But here's where you get some information. You can set up your smart settings, so your warning temperatures and all that. Uh, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and format that. So to do that, we're just gonna click this box that says yes, format, format and multiple disks, okay. And then I'm going to click on format to format that new two terabyte drive. And you can see formatting, and now we have a bunch of free space. So there we go. Now I'm gonna go over here to shares. This Docker share right here, I'm eventually gonna get rid of. My app data is the one that I am going to assign to cache. So use cache, yes. Actually, let's do only. So all my Docker fi files are gonna be in cache. And one of the reasons why I like to do this is for example, my Plex library or my Plex Docker folder. It has tens of thousands of individual files, totaling over, I think, about 10 gigabytes or so. Just imagine every time it needs to load a cover art, a, like a song, anything like that, it needs to find every individual file. It takes forever, and that's one of the things that ends up making like the Plex UI and all that laggy, so having that stuff on an SSD is way better. Select cache pool, that is our only one. Enable copy on right, auto sounds good. All this looks good, so let's hit apply. So with all that done, I should be able to go into my network here. So let's go right there. Let's go to our network. And then under Hopkey Media, we have app data. And I should be able to just drag and drop all of this right on into app data, which it is working. And just for a little before after, we can see we're using just under four megabytes. I'm gonna let that finish up here. It might take a while. And I've given this a refresh here. You could see that it's starting to use space on that cache drive. So it, we're looking good so far. And with the magic of editing, everything is now moved over. So I'm gonna now have to go through the painful process of actually fixing or editing all these configurations. Let's start off with something easy, such as audio bookshelf, all I need to do. Go in, user data audiobooks, that's good. This right here is not good. So this is actually going to be in app data like that, audiobook shelf, and then switch out Docker for app data. And then we should be able to just apply that and hopefully it just works. There's only a couple of containers I can think of where I'm gonna to have to go into the actual, like through the container configuration to change that. I think like my uh, BitTorrent client might be one of them, but the command finished successfully. Let's go done. It's started up here. So we'll let web UI and we are rocking. So if I hit submit 
There we go. Beautiful. And it looks like everything's in there. Don't judge my uh, books I have in here. I've gotten a lot of these ones for free. And then just go through the process of doing this with all of these and I should be <laughs> have it fixed to the point where everything's kind of default in the proper pools, cash and all that, how it is supposed to be. All right, there we go. So I went through and I fixed all of those. The only thing that I needed to like manually go in and intervene with was the Volge VPN. I needed to change my password and enable the plugin. That didn't transfer with the config transfer, but everything now seems to be good to go. I can enable all this real quick. And if we go and head over to our shares, we do have some unprotected files here. I'll figure out that in a minute. But this right here, Docker, I am not gonna be needing this anymore. The share is empty, so we have the option to delete it here. So I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with that. There we go, share Docker has been deleted, done. So now, the only one that's kind of mine here is the data one for my media files. Now with all that, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Unraid is a fantastic NAS software to do a whole bunch of different things. It is by far the most complete and easiest thing that I've used so far in Feature Rich. I've used uh, Open Media Vault, True NAS, Core and Scale, uh, Proxmox for some things, and overall, Unraid seems to be the move when it comes to what I like to use. Uh, I do recommend this channel right here if you are interested in learning more. Space Invader 1 is way more intelligent than me when it comes to Unraid and has a ton of different tutorials, and I end up watching his tutorials quite a bit when it comes to trying to figure out things that I need to do. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely wonderful day and good bye.